Yeah, hello and welcome. Thank you very much for being here and uh, also thank you for being interested in this uh, great project that I'm uh, working on with uh, a lot of colleagues for some time also, also now. Um, I will be talking today about the um, Axiom project, um, Adapted Open Source Cinema. It's not only about um, cameras, but mainly about uh, open hardware cameras. Just a brief introduction to those of you who might not know what open source hardware is. Um, the idea is to make every step of the production process and all the aspects of the um, project uh, freely avail available, uh, open source, in a way that everyone can um, get to see and to use um, freely all the possible technical uh, schemata and all the technical documentation, but as well the hardware, so theoretically people could rebuild the hardware. So um, a little bit uh, about my background. Uh, I'm an ambassador researcher with Axiom, with the project, and uh, uh, doing mainly open hardware research. So um, I run the Artistic Technology Lab, which is uh, currently located in Vienna with the Research Institute for Arts and Technology. And I also run the Artistic Bokeh Initiative, which is a um, media arts group, and we are um, setting up some kind of exchange uh, with other labs uh, around Europe, uh, mainly working in projects uh, in the domain between art and technology. And you can also find this slide online if you are interested in seeing and getting some more information or like clicking through the links or something. So um, we need open source cinema cameras. Um, at least um, that's what I thought also when I was joining the project. But why do we need this open source cinema cameras? So mainly um, proprietary cameras, and um, I'm talking about all the film cameras, but also photo cameras as well, um, are in a way limited by the manufacturers. So um, of course, um, that means sometimes that you cannot get the actual resolution that you want, um, the actual frame rate that you want, uh, compression is not that good as it could be, so the, the um, technology is limited by the uh, manufacturers, maybe sometimes because they have a, uh, another product that they want to sell, or it's some other decision, or sometimes um, it's just um, that development time, uh, is like the, the maintenance time for the hardware ran out and nobody is uh, developing the firmware any further. And um, DSLR uh, hacking communities were targeting this uh, um, since quite some time. Just uh, to give you a few examples, maybe some of you know the Magic Lantern project, which is a project that tries to um, create an alternative firmware for various Canon cameras, trying to make them also available for video and for other um, uh, issues and, and, and tools and usages that were not actually intended to be. And um, there is actually to this uh, date, um, except our project, no professional open source solution for camera, for video camera, available. So um, actually here I put you a quote of the Apertus Association um, to um, explain a little bit uh, what is the idea behind the project. So the idea is to um, create a completely um, free software-based cinema camera, but not only cinema cameras, also any tools you might need in the process of developing or uh, uh, producing a movie or moved image uh, production. So this Axiom project introduces this first professional, extendable and affordable uh, camera. Also, the idea of this project is to make it uh, modular. So ideally, at the later stage, um, you don't have to throw away your camera, but you can rebuild it. It's like a um, kind of a maintainable, repairable device that you can also um, ideally develop your own modules for. Um, use it in various um, different uh, uh, other uses that were not intended originally, or also like develop your own uh, scientific applications for it, you name it. So um, short introduction to the project, because I'm not uh, aware if people know the project so good. Um, so this um, Apertus project was started in this actually the association in 2006 with this idea um, to create a professional moving image camera based on the Elfel 333 camera which is, um, I don't know if uh, people know the Elfel camera, it's um, actually the camera which is used in the, in the, or actually the company produces cameras mostly for, for Google Street View and for the 360 panoramic uh, uh, images. This was also um, the reason why um, the development of the previously existing um, cameras in 2009 was frozen because they were focusing mostly on these panoramic solutions and less on the professional moving images, video images cameras. So uh, in 2011, 
the Axiom project was started because um, it was clear in 2011 that um, it's no chance that Elfel will bring in a more professional or, or a, a new camera that was actually um, announced several times but was never released. So the idea was to start from scratch and uh, we didn't know at this time, I didn't join the project at this time, but uh, when I talk about we, I'm like talking in this kind of uh, plural, how it is in like open source projects. So um, the project then decided, and the people running the project at this time, decided to develop a completely entirely new system based uh, on uh, um, self-developed hardware and completely uh, from scratch, actually. So um, this association, the Apertus Association, was uh, found in 2012, and in 2013, the first prototype was developed, which I will uh, show you briefly. And uh, in 2015, now we uh, started a crowdfunding for the Axiom Beta, which actually was, there was the idea to pull um, together with other people who are interested in camera development to um, get the hardware cheaper, but also to start developing. This is actually the, st the state where we are right now. And also in 2015, we started the development of another camera, the Axiom Gamma, which I will also briefly introduce. So um, what we, um, what first was happening in 2013, the Axiom Alpha was developed. It's like, uh, here you see the board, it's like a, a very rough and kind of a bulky, big prototype, but it was more of a proof of concept. And this is how the case looked. And um, basically you see this uh, here on a, mounted on a rig, it's a kind of bulky, big uh, um, hardware, but, but usable and working. So we shot a lot of uh, uh, demo footage with it and we were actually showcasing it. Here you see it mounted on a, on a crane system. And uh, um, actually what you see is like, uh, and I uh, uh, chose this picture for a reason, because um, if we look at like professional, maybe semi-professional, but definitely professional uh, moving image pro production, um, people always tend to um, design their rigs themselves. So it's like a DIY situation, the rig as a, as a basis. And um, so it's kind of, uh, it looks like kind of, messy, but this is how usually rigs also look. In this particular case, it didn't look even that messy, in my opinion. Uh, here you see another side view of the, of the first uh, rig of the uh, Alpha. And uh, now we have the, the beta, which is actually um, ready now. We have like three developer uh, versions actually done. I brought also one with me. So if somebody, <laughs> thank you. So if somebody's interested in actually um, watching it, or like uh, I can briefly show also what is uh, working already, what is not working. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way, like maybe today after the talk, or also tomorrow to, uh, for interested people to, to be able like, uh, to sit outside and like a little bit watch through the features and through what's actually already working. And um, so the idea was we wanted to develop this camera, but of course you need a lot of uh, money in a way to order all these kind of uh, PCBs and the sensors themselves are also expensive. We, are, uh, we looked into various different sensor models, but usually the sensor is around 1,000 euro, something like that. And the complete uh, uh, beta as we have it here, um, excluding the enclosure, is around 2,300 euro, something like that. So what we did is with this crowdfunding on Indiegogo, we uh, collected interest from the audiences and from people that are uh, interested in developing it, and then to pull together and to um, develop this, uh, the first batch of the cameras. So currently um, we have like two slots for modules, but I will talk about this a little bit later. So here you see the, the case, which is um, now not ready yet, but um, this is how the case should look. And um, also um, what I said before already, um, every blueprint and all the, the technical drawings, everything is released on GitHub, so also feel free to, to look into the files. And uh, also, um, all possible aspects of the, of the camera are open source, as far as you can do that, because of course you're limited with the sensors. You have to buy the sensors from, from somewhere. Um, our dream is to, in the future, develop our own sensor, but this is a very utopian uh, uh, attempt, because it's, it's not that easy to develop your own sensor. There's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, technology and like, uh, uh, a lot of patents. And this is also the problem with the camera, of course, and this is, I will also talk about this later a little bit, um, about how hard is it, is it actually to, to pick sensors and which kind of sensors are possible. So here you see an overview of the, of the beta. On the left uh, side you see 
um, the two modules, the top module slot and the plugin module slot. Um, this is basically the, the first attempt to make this completely modular. So um, people can develop their own modules and uh, make, for example, um, different processing uh, uh, modules for, uh, currently it's two HDMI outputs, but uh, theoretically there could be other um, uses as well. It's basically, uh, um, the possibilities are endless almost. So um, here I just copied out the specs to give you an idea what is theoretically possible with the sensor and also with, the, with, the, with this camera. So it's a, um, theoretically up to 300 frames per second at full resolution possible, which would be 300 frames per second 4K in super 35 millimeters um, format, which is like amazing. Currently um, we cannot really um, get like 300 uh, FPS, but we are working on it and extending it and also um, developers jumped in and are developing um, on this. Currently it's like one person actively developing on it and since this is the third uh, um, developer camera now produced, we are actually trying to get more people to um, have the camera and to work with it. So um, here you see how it currently looks without the enclosing and um, since uh, of course, we have 3D printers around. We also uh, tried to pr uh, 3D print one uh, enclosure. So the idea is also to, to um, have like different enclosures, to have like different materials of enclosures, um, all these kinds of aspects. So um, just briefly to give you an idea, we also started uh, um, a second camera project, which is a kind of a spin-off of this camera, but often people uh, think it's the successor of the beta but it's actually not, it's maybe our uh, mistake to name it like uh, Beta and Gamma. But um, the Gamma is a, is a kind of a more, a, a bigger and more professional camera and it's, uh, the, the whole project is uh, funded by Horizon 2020 from the European Union and we have a partner consortium, uh, actually the, the whole project is, is led by the University of Applied Arts in Vienna and we have um, um, a consortium of companies and, 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 and also the Apertus Association, of course, to actually try to develop ideally six or let's say six uh, prototypes um, for the Gamma um, in 2016. So this is how it should ideally look. So you see it's like quite different from, from what the uh, beta looks like. The idea still is here um, to have a completely modular camera, but the modules are uh, much more, much bigger and much more, uh, in, a, in a way, um, uh, more fitting in a kind of a production setting. And also, um, interestingly, um, uh, what we thought about would be, would be maybe a kind of an uh, interesting aspect also for filming in different, uh, um, in different styles also is like here, the idea would be to have the sensor replaceable so you could theoretically like, like easier than, than it is in the, in the beta, it's of course also possible but here you have to screw around a lot but in the gamma the idea is that it's like a hot pluggable module ideally and um, currently our plans to, to produce this from the technical aspect uh, are outlined here. So basically um, as you see it's a much more um, advanced or like, like um, a stronger camera which is more focused on the professional uh, um, movie uh, production, business market and like all these aspects because we think it's, it's um, theoretically there's a lot of demand there because people are already uh, uh, used to um, develop their own rigs and to find like specific uh, cameras and to um, test around a lot with uh, different lenses and, and um, um, aesthetics. But um, we thought also it's important to have like a kind of an affordable, cheap, small um, development version to possibly also find other uses for it. So um, I'm going just briefly to this slide. Here you see um, our team working on the, on the gamma. So this is what we do. And um, here's uh, the slide from what I already outlined a little bit. So the beta is uh, more of a development kit and a compact camera. For, for example, drones, gimbals, cable cams. Um, and it also has, of course, the same sensors because we are limited from the sensors that we can choose. But um, the Gamma is a professional kit for all challenges. In a way, um, it's really a production, uh, high-end production camera. Um, in a way, you can also put more modules inside, four modules. So um, this is um, ideally what we are aiming for. But this is still in the future, so this will be 2016. So um, the idea also behind um, the whole project is to um, make it like easy, extendable and easy accessible to other developers. So ideally 
um, you don't need to be a um, FPGA programmer to use the camera, so we are trying to make every aspect of it as easy, understandable as possible, but of course it takes time. Ideally, we have this open module concept, so we have this kind of uh, demo uh, modules already uh, produced, which are like HDMI output modules, but um, ideally you can uh, create your own modules. It's like basically limitless what you can do with these modules. Uh, and could also um, easily exchange them. Just to give you an example of what, what could be these kind of modules, um, like sen sensor applications or um, different other output modules, then for example, a mini display port, other, other output, but also like uh, processing or for example, also recording module. There's a lot of uh, possibilities in the modules. And uh, here's a picture of, uh, of the HDMI module, which is uh, now plugged in in the, in the lower part. And um, also the idea is to have this ecosystem, so the whole um, idea behind the camera and the whole project is to have it completely produced in Europe as far as it's possible, because of course there's a lot of um, um, problems like the sensors, you cannot check if they are really produced, where they are really produced, but usually not in Europe. And um, ideally also um, we have a lot of people that can actually work with the camera and repair it, for example. So the, I, I believe if enough people use it, it becomes a kind of an ecosystem it, uh, by itself. So for example, for rentals or for um, special niche applications such as um, underwater um, videography or um, there's like a lot of um, like different niches which would need this kind of uh, modularity in a camera. Um, another small side project we are developing is the Axiom Remote, which is like a um, kind of a remote control for these cameras, which would be especially used, uh, especially usable for uh, underwater applications. So I think there's a kind of an, uh, I think you get the idea of the ecosystem a little bit. So currently we're just using it because there's not enough developer units uh, out. I mean, it's like, this is the third one. But ideally people like register and you can maybe also, also rent out to other people the camera or can actually de develop also their businesses around it. So, um, there have also been a lot of challenges and there still are a lot of challenges. So um, most of the challenges we face are um, interfacing with proprietary and closed source devices. Like for example, we want to support um, all possible video um, or like, like recording devices that could actually um, uh, of course record the stream but it's not clear because um, the developers of all these uh, um, uh, proprietary cameras don't really say how they will, uh, how they use the HDMI standard. I mean, you can actually, you have to somehow a little bit reverse engineer to actually look what is sent. It's like really interesting because there's like special modes for raw recording and all these um, 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 different aspects. But also, of course, um, this is a, a big challenge regarding the sensors because um, we have now three sensors which we can use with the whole camera and it's, uh, um, it's actually inter interesting because we have to interface and talk to a lot of uh, uh, sensor developers and it's not clear if you get the right documentation that you can use it in a, in a specific productive way. So um, sometimes you have to sign NDAs um, and in the end you don't get all the documentation you need. So it's a kind of a small um, uh, amount of sensors that we can use now, but we think already it's changing because um, the manufacturers already saw that there might be a demand, of course they can sell more sensors. So um, ideally there's also a change over the years. I, don't, I cannot say from now, but it looks also, also that we might uh, be compatible with more sensors soon. So another challenge would be the dislocated work because it's a quite big community of people working on this project. Um, not only on the cameras, but also on the whole um, projects around it. Um, but actually, it's it's working out till now. So, and um, yeah, I just wanted to um, briefly also tell you how um, it's possible to join the development or to join the the whole uh, project. So um, currently, we are. Um, manufacturing the cameras, like really building uh, the betters and sending them to the uh, crowdfunding supporters uh, um, at cost. So that's, that's, that was also uh, what is our aim, also to, to um, get a lot of people interested and want to develop with it. And um, soon, as far as we can, uh, as soon as we can actually uh, produce more, we, um, we will make this kind of a voucher system where it's possible to, to get these vouchers and then also get the, the hardware on cost. Uh, we found out that it's a lot of different people that are interested in the, in the cameras because of different reasons. Some think it's like a small camera, camera you can just get and then film with it. It's not the case right now. It's very hacky, so it runs uh, uh, Arch Linux and it, it's like kind of a, uh, a terminal 
um, setting. It has no uh, menu still. We don't have an uh, HTTP interface, nothing. So basically we are just in the, in the very early stages of developing um, here. But of course there are other stages where people would actually join in. So we thought with these vouchers you can actually decide when you want the camera, uh, like regarding also um, the features that are deployed already. So um, actually I brought a video of the demo footage shot with the beta, which I will briefly show you. This was actually shot in, uh, like recorded in the, in the RAM of the camera. So this was uh, st still not possible with the HDMI output. But um, here we see like different modes also of production. And um, also you notice on the right sa uh, side the, the problem with the sensor configuration. So this is not a very clean image, and at least not on the right side, but the rest of it is, is, is uh, quite good. We already fixed this issue. It's an open source project. So yeah. If we see some errors, we try to fix it fast. But um, you, you get the idea. It's like uh, already producing these kind of images all with a complete open source workflow, which is, which is nice. Of course, you still need recording devices which are um, recording these images. In the case, if you record it to the RAM, you can completely maintain a complete open source workflow. Uh, in case you're recording from the HDMI, there's, it's kind of getting hard because there's only proprietary devices out there. So yeah. Um, basically, also, um, if you want, you can, oops, sorry about that. You can contact us, oops. Um, and also, um, a lot of people from the development team will be uh, in the RC, so feel free also to, to talk to them, and of course, you can also talk to me later on, and possibly also we, we find a way to showcase the camera, and also, if you're interested to to, to see it, what it produces, which kind of pictures to see this live. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, get in contact with us or contact me directly, but usually if you send to a team at apertus.org, people will react and will uh, uh, try to answer all your questions. Um, the IRC is quite uh, uh, frequently uh, used and a lot of people are there because also from the dislocated nature of the project, this is a necessity for us how we work together. So yeah, feel free to to join us and also it would be nice uh, if people are interested to develop or to um, actually join the project, it would be, uh, you're very welcome actually. Thank you. So I guess we have a couple of minutes for Q&A, so just line up in front of the microphone. Oh, there you go. A uh, quick question. Uh, have you? Tr uh, I see you, you said you have just three uh, ready cameras already. Uh, have you tried any of them in uh, some kind of production setting, like you, at the Congress or somewhere else, that you had the cameras working for a few days and com to compare them with the usual stuff that's used, the pr proprietary, proprietary cameras? Um, uh, can you again uh, say the last sentence? I didn't understand it. And have you, uh, if you've ever tried these cameras in such a production setting, have you compared uh, uh, them to the proprietary cameras? Yes, yes, okay, maybe, um, good question actually. So what proprietary cameras do, um, they have always a kind of an image sweetening. So they change the, the image, it's not actually um, the clear image, it's, it would be on the sensor, they have all the kind of specific ways of dealing with the image and like, for example, like uh, smoothing it a little bit and also the debiring is totally different or it's like uh, different in most of the cameras. And most importantly, you cannot uh, actually change this process or you cannot uh, change these sorts of algorithms because you are like uh, um, in a way limited to what the manufacturer gives you. So the idea with the, with the Axiom cameras is also that you can even uh, have your own debiring uh, uh, algorithm running or like your own different way of uh, producing the, the image. So it, it's, yeah, so the, the answer is yes, it's, it's different. <laughs> uh, and uh, because I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to the microphone at my right. Uh, you said it's possible to put the images out of the RAM in a completely open source workflow. In which interface do you put the images out of the RAM? Um, in this case, it's, uh, it's connected, the, the camera is connectable via, via Ethernet cable and also via USB cable, so you have to dump it on the, um, over, uh, um, of course, um, it's like very limited, yeah, so we can actually record a few seconds, 
but this would be in, 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 in this high uh, frame amount. Um, in this case, it's like, it's like a small, um, in a way you can compare it to a Raspberry Pi, <laughs> because it's also like an arm, so, so you can just, uh, you have to dump it over some, some uh, interface which is fast enough, of course. Uh, what is the data rate that flows out of the sensor into the RAM? Um, this I cannot answer you in detail, but you can actually go to the RC and ask the developer, because I'm not the developer of the camera. Okay, thank you. Uh, are you at some time planning also to build photographic cameras or just for filming? Um, yes, of course, in the, it is actually a photographic camera because it takes like uh, still images. So theoretically you could use it for, for as a photographic uh, camera. But um, the sensors are of course different because you have like um, higher pixel uh, sensors and they have not so, uh, so much frames per second, the photographic sensors. But theoretically you could, uh, um, if you find a sensor which is like uh, uh, documented enough, just find it and, and, uh, and we try if it's, <laughs> if it's working out. But it's like a, a, it, it needs uh, development actually to, to do this, but theoretically it's possible, of course. Okay, because I sense they might be interested in, in that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. How is the camera currently being controlled? Command line, config files, web interface? Um, currently, it's a, it's a command line interface, and um, uh, you control everything in the, in the command line. So we have a few scripts that run uh, specific settings, like exposure. So er er everything is really only on the command line as for now. But um, we are actively working on a middleware which runs in Python, which is actually partly developed already, where we can actually um, have overlays, which are, for example, the second HDMI port. Uh, um, visible, so you have uh, um, a, a menu structure which is then programmable, and you can actually um, um, develop your own menus for it and for your specific cases. But also, ideally, we're thinking of a of an a HTTP interface where you can um, easily get some. Uh, um, for example, also an API would be great to have, like where you can actually remote control it. But um, so we are planning this, of course. But currently, it's it's a uh, command line only. Uh, you said currently the camera codes into RAM or outputs over HDMI. Uh, are there plans to change that to record to SDs or SSDs? Um, yes, for the gamma definitely, but for now for the beta we wanted to, to develop a module that works uh, with kind of um, existing technological solutions, so HDMI is quite a standard. Although it also um, is not that easy because HDMI is also not a really free uh, a format, so we were thinking about a uh, um, mini display port, which would be possible, but it's much more harder to develop. So the second, the, 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 the second, the next uh, um, small um, kind of plug-in module will be uh, maybe mini display port. Yeah, hi. Uh, which lens mount did you use for your camera? Um, theoretically, it's now, um, for the first one, for the Alpha, we used Nikon, uh, Nikon F mount. And um, this one is now Sony Alpha mount. So basically the idea is to keep uh, uh, um, a low distance to the sensor so that you can apply um, other lens mounts and you can uh, um, apply adapters so you can use the most variety of, of lenses. Of course, there's no, no motor controls yet. So um, mm -hmm. it's like a manual, you have to manually um, control the lenses. Okay, and sorry, one more is uh, which kind of, are you gonna think about the projection of the cinema? Oh, so the projection of the cinema. Are you gonna do like any projection kind of open source uh, for the sharing of a cinema or anything? Like it that? would be great, but it's like I'm, it, this is really taking a lot of time to develop this now. Okay, but it would sure. be great to to <laughs> one thing at to a time. develop an open source project. It would be awesome. Great, thanks. Um, what, what do you think about using SDI as an output instead of HDMI? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, also we are thinking of an SDI module, but um, for now it was really the easiest to develop the, the HDMI module. We are thinking um, of a, uh, in, the, in the gamma, of course, to have for sure an SDI um, module, but for now we wanted to make it um, um, also fast available that, uh, because like developers are want to use it already and a lot of people have ideas for how to extend it. So the idea is to, to um, to research all this and to make this like available fast to everyone that people can, can start uh, thinking of their own modules and developing this, but it's definitely planned, yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. So I think we're done and uh, 
Give a please uh, another big round of applause for Matthias.